this panacea system is a fast track to generational healing that will help you overcome soul blocks, which will enable you and your clients to address a variety of mental and emotional health issues and begin to operate from a higher state of mind to reach your potential so you can both give and receive more from life. If you want success in any area, your career, relationships, health, finances, you must learn to establish equal proportions of giving and receiving. It's a universal principle. So where are you over or under giving your power? We'll cover fundamentals such as this throughout this course. As a genetic recording practitioner, you will have access to additional resources that include digital transformational workbooks, online courses, therapeutic exercises, workshops, mentorship, and healing retreats to further educate and liberate you, helping you to retrain your mind as well as your clients, allowing you to get from where you are today to where you want to be and increasing your professional potential. You will experience all of these powerful breakthroughs, how to awaken and transform into a richer and more elevated way of life while expanding your ability to contribute in a greater capacity. Now let's bring it all together in the final panacea to recap all you've learned and put new skills into practical application with, with a workbook and exercises. These processes will enable you to practice and solidify your new habits and beliefs while eradicating old ones. In these modules, we will be applying perceptual reframing and recoding genetic beliefs using the panacea model. As we have already introduced, we begin the panacea acronym with P, which stands for presenting problem and is related to a person, problem, or perceived void, and may very well be associated with an inherited belief or pattern. The panacea model will help you to identify and address these core emotions and epigenetic beliefs that will in turn rectify many of your life's problems. Apply the panacea model to each problem and parent but only one issue at a time. If you were adopted, fostered, or don't know your biological parents or have step parents, this will create a little more work for you. You will need to apply the panacea model to the emotional belief related to your biological parents, such as a perceived void of not feeling wanted, rejected, or abandoned, as well as apply this model to each of your caretakers, addressing one person at a time. If every person completed their generational healing, we would only need to clear the negative genes and beliefs we inherited from our parents. Regretfully, however, few people complete their soul work, let alone heal their ancestral line, that it may require some of us to apply this framework to our grandparents and several more generations back. According to Jablanca and Roz, 2009, biological heredity continues for four or more generations and are revealed in different ways that include psycho-emotional transmissions and an increase in susceptibility to diseases, pathologies, and even behaviors shared by our ancestors. Kellerman in 2015 asserts that there is a strong correlation between parental PTSD and PTSD of their offspring. Therefore, the more a person experienced traumatic events, the more likely sure he suffered from PTSD, which increases the transference of this disposition onto the offspring. We want to get to the root of the matter from when it originated so that TTT is cleared and we can break the negative chain of epigenetic transmission. And we can't really know who we are until we know where we've been. For many of us, our great grandparents may have been slaves, farmers, war veterans, immigrants, or belonged to religious cults or suffered persecutions. Consequently, many of them endured poverty and abuse experienced oppression and starvation, or witnessed and experienced extreme trauma or violence, and may have been a victim even of murder, prejudices, or suffered injustices, human conflict, and many other types of tragedies. The drive to learn about the backstory of our ascendants lends value and credence into the many hardships and sorrows that they may have endured, as well as adding insight into some of our own inherent propensities and dispositions, as well as helps us to empathize their traumas and gives a little bit more purpose into our own lives, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Major traumas can impact entire communities resulting in PTSD and its epigenetic effects on the children of survivors. These also encompass systemic traumas and specific parental trauma, including civil and world wars, weather-related natural disasters, political unrest, or acts of terrorism, such as the Dutch hunger winter, the Holocaust, and the bombing of the World Trade Center. For instance, 
Jelinek 2015 notes that systemic trauma and heritable effects of slavery continue to appear in the African American population, as well as historical trauma in the Native American community. Sometimes I even wonder if I've had the slave lineage. <laughs> right? I'm sure all of us can relate to some kind of passed down traumas from what our ancestors may have suffered and what we've had to learn to overcome. And once again, it can help us to heal a lot of maybe unresolved emotions we've had if we've harbored any kind of resentment, knowing what they've been through. Right. Okay. Children of survivors are molded by the traumatic experiences of their parents, inducing intense feelings such as fear and helplessness. All famines, wars, persecutions, and mass murder, which left a deep and enduring trace in the body of the first generation, may be assumed to leave some kind of scar also upon successive generations. As a result, you may find that the traumatic experiences of your predecessors or the beliefs they held have affected your own life, whether aware of it or not. Think of it like passing on an instruction manual of multiple generations that sets the stage for the patterns of subsequent generations. If you do not have clarity on where you would like to start in the panacea, it is always recommended to at least work on any issues you have related to your parents and or your caretakers and one individual at a time. The process and steps in this panacea model is then repeated until your ancestral chart is cleared from each core belief and or genetic issue. Because the goal for each of us is to become the best version of both of our parents, this implies that the goal is to become the best version of ourself. For many of us, this may be a discomforting thought, but if you examine the strengths that each of your biological parents exhibit and envision the greatest potential that is latent within each of them, then take time to realize what this could mean for you. You are capable of recoding your epigenetics to the boundless potential that is possible and lays dormant in you from every strength, gift, and talent derived from each of them. So, are you ready? Now let's help you identify the core of your self-sabotage, distorted perceptions, and limiting beliefs that have kept you stuck in negative patterns and cycles throughout your life. These tend to be recycled experiences and repressed memories that can help us locate our blind spots mirrored in generational patterns. Self-sabotage can be described as self-defeating behaviors that interfere with our desires and unconsciously set us up for failure due to subconscious fears and conflicting beliefs that produce outcomes that contradict our ideals. Just to illustrate, if you had a belief that was transferred genetically, any kind of hardship that you may have experienced in your lifetime, may have reinforced that negative belief, further producing this self-sabotaging behavior. And most often, these occurred from negative experiences from our past and it imprinted a distorted belief that somehow we may not have been good enough or we didn't feel loved at that moment. So we're gonna go ahead and get into a lot more of this further in depth throughout this practitioner course. So reflect on any unmet emotional needs from childhood, often passed down from parents and grandparents, and observe where this programming is still operating in your current life. For instance, if you never felt acknowledged by your parents or primary caretakers, witness how this unmet need or perceived void became a driving force but continues to lead to cycles of defeat and failure in the end. For instance, are you still seeking acknowledgement from partners or others and from these parents or caretakers? And this is true for, for any other unmet emotional need. Mm -hmm. from our childhood or psychologically passed down through your epigenomes. You may have experienced trauma such as bullying, abuse, or unfortunately a loss and may constantly be at the helm of defeat due to the mistreatment and kind behaviors of others or still experiencing repeat loss in relationships. In such case, you might find yourself often having your good nature taken advantage of, exhibiting passive behaviors and having difficulty establishing boundaries with others. You might relate to the language of, it's not my fault, it's someone else's fault, or others are doing it to me. And on the other hand, others may frequently pose a threat or in, in contrast, others may frequently appear threatened by you. Do you feel powerless over your circumstances or that things are outside of your control? Do you tend to react from pride because you're afraid what others might do to you? Do you have a team player mindset or do you prefer to assume all of the control? These are common examples of power struggles that have existed for eons within human interactions. Just look at our global conflict and war. There's no doubt that if you frequently experience power struggles that this is an inherited issue. 
Do you have a passive mother or father that portrayed powerlessness and had a victim mentality? Do you have a parent or grandparent that served in the military or in active duty? The foremost belief that is responsible for the feeling of victimization is powerlessness and defenselessness. So perhaps one of your parents may have struggled with some type of rejection or abuse that caused you to have some passivity in your own behaviors. Perchance, powerlessness is not your issue. Rather, you may struggle with self-worth issues such as perfectionism or indolence because you never felt you were good enough. Consequently, you will never feel like you're enough, even if it appears that you have conquered all of your goals and dreams until you make this shift psychologically. The acknowledgement and belief in your own self-worth needs to come from within, reprogrammed from you and your own mind. We're going to go ahead and cover how all of these issues, when we feel like maybe our self-worth was compromised, will lead to a multitude of different outcomes such as these. So we can go ahead and reflect. Where do you recognize any of these issues playing out in your current life? Does it seem to relate to any of your parents and even any grandparents' emotional and behavioral patterns? Because our parents represent our primary beliefs and are the imprint of our relationship patterns, including the relationship we have with ourselves, they often serve as our key mirrors. In this respect, it is imperative to begin the psycho-emotional healing programs by working on your parents. Another individual or problem may appear to to better represent your current situation, or there may be another catalyst acting as a key player in shaping you. But it is important to apply this work at, is, at a minimum of starting with a psychological relationship with your parents. The other problems or key players are only a symptom and symbolic of our primary beliefs, and subsequently, issues with them will likely dissolve once we get to the source and root of the issue, starting with healing our family tree. Yes, so fully absorb that. Any relationship Conflict that we may be experiencing will always start at the root, which is the parent-child relationship, that it's just a transfer and establish the foundation of our other relationships. Correct. So now let's dive into the panacea model.